You probably have heard of a Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG. But today we're going to talk about Knowledge Augmented Generation or CAG. Now, one of the biggest limitations of standard RAG is the chunking process since it loses logical connections between entities since each retrieved chunk is treated individually during the generation process. That's why we have approaches like graph rag or light rag that uses knowledge graphs to preserve the logical connection between entities. Knowledge augmented generation takes it one step further by adding multi-hop question answering and reasoning capabilities, which are essential in complex reasoning tasks. First, in this video, I'll show you how it works, and then I'll show you how to set it up on your local machine. Okay, so just like a standard rag system, it has two steps. The first one is the index creation process, and the second step is the retrieval or querying process. The index creation process has multiple different steps. So first, we take our documents, extract text from those, pass it on to a semantic chunking processor, then we use an LLM along with knowledge models for information extraction. It uses OpenIE for extraction of subject, relationship, and the object of that relation, along with knowledge graphs to preserve those relationships between different entities. Now, there is a special alignment process which removes disambiguities among these entities and standardize them both within the documents as well as these knowledge models that are built in. Now, to understand those knowledge models, let's look at an example of an entity of a person. The person can have multiple different attributes. That is going to be the taxonomy of the person. And then we can use that taxonomy to figure out the relationship between this specific object with other objects or entities that are present in our knowledge base. Here are some other examples of different entity types or knowledge models that are present. We're going to look at some of them later in the video. The second part is the uh, query retrieval process for which CAG uses logical form solver. So the way this works is that whenever you have a user query, it first does planning. So let's say if it's able to divide a user query into multiple different queries by using query decomposition or can create multiple different queries which can enhance the retrieval it will actually plan that first then it's going to do a retrieval for each of those queries and reason on top of each of the retrieved results now this reasoning combines both the llm reasoning plus the knowledge graph reasonings and those combined results are passed on to the LLM for final generation. This multi-step process results in better retrieval and better generation. And as a result, it does a really good job both in single-step and multi-step retrieval on multi-hop QA datasets. Especially if you look at the hot pot QA dataset, it outperforms all the existing methods. Even on the other two datasets, the performance is really comparable to the existing methods. This is a very interesting approach that does a hybrid search using knowledge graph plus the embedding based semantic search, but also combines uh, this hybrid reasoning on top of it. I'll highly recommend to read the paper if you're interested. Next, I'm going to show you how to set this up uh, on your local machine. This is an open source project from OpenSPG under the Apache 2.0 license and they are also the kind sponsors of this video. I am running this on Mac OS, but the installation and setup instructions are going to remain the same for Linux and Windows users as well. There are uh, two different ways in which you can use CAG. One is through the, the graphical user interface, and the second one is through the Python client. In this video, I'm going to show you the graphical user interface Everything is running under a Docker container. So you will need to install the Docker dis desktop app on your local machine and select the appropriate version based on your operating system. The installation is going to be a two step process. So first we're going to download this docker compose.yaml file 
which has all the configurations needed for setting up our Docker container. And after that, we are going to actually create that Docker container on our local machine and run it. Okay, so first I need to run this curl command to download the docker compose.yaml file. If I type ls, you can see that the file is already downloaded on my local machine. Next, we're going to create the docker container by running this command. Now, that's going to take some time, but if you want to see what is actually running, you can run this docker compose up dash t command and these are the three different things that are running. One is a MySQL server. The other one is the new 4J. That is going to be used for storing our knowledge graph. And then the actual open SPG server, which is running the CAG or knowledge augmented generation server. Now, in order to access that, we will need to go to this URL on your local machine. So here is the interface that you're going to see. To create a new retrieval task, we'll first need to go and uh, click on create knowledge base. So here we'll need to provide a few settings. Uh, you need to provide both Chinese and English name. Both can be exactly the same thing. Uh, the only difference is that for the English name, the first letter is supposed to be capital. Okay, so I already created a knowledge base with the name CAG. So here are some of the configurations that I used. So first we need to provide the storage configurations. The database name is CAG. Here's the password. Since everything is going to be stored in a new 4J database, so we're using that URI along with the user. Next, we need to set up our LLM. LLM is going to be used for entity extractions, plus all the relationships that is going to find and all the reasoning tasks. Now for my LLM, I'm using DeepSeek as a API provider. And the reason is that DeepSeek VT seems to be the best LLM out there when it comes to open weight LLMs. And even is able to beat something like Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and GPT-40 on some tasks, which is pretty impressive. But you can use any LLM which you are running locally or a proprietary model, as long as it's using the OpenAI API standard. So here we are providing the base URL. The model name is uh, DeepSeek Chat, and you will also need to provide your API key. Next, we need to set up our embedding model. This is going to be used for semantic extraction or a semantic similarity search. Again, you need either a proprietary API or a local running model, which follows the OpenAI API standard. So in this case, we are going to be hosting our model locally using Olama. And for that, you first need to download Olama. And next, you need to choose the embedding model that you want to use. In my case, I want to use the BGA M3, which is one of the best open weight embedding model out there. So you just need to pull that model using Olama pull and then provide the model name. And here I am providing the model name as BGE M3. The vector dimensions that I'm using is 1024. You can also provide these optional parameters, extracts the information and look at the language and it's going to process the prompt. So I'm going to be setting this to English. Okay, so once you create your knowledge base, then you can go to knowledge base management. Now here you can see I already have uh, some tasks created. So um, here's the CAG paper that is embedded and uh, a knowledge, a knowledge uh, graph was created on top of it. If you want to create another task, just click on create task. I'm going to call it CAG and we're going to upload the CAG paper. Click on next. You can change the uh, chunk size or max uh, segment length. I'll keep it to default. There is an extraction model, so I'm going to keep that to default as well. And then we'll click on finish. Now, depending on the size of the document, this can take some time. But let's look at the logs. So first it starts reading the document. Then it's going to use a PDF reader because we selected a PDF file to chunk the document and then do the extraction of entities and the relationships. Now, once the extraction process is complete you can look at the extraction results as well let me show you the specialized knowledge model that 
CAG uses. They try to extract information based on different knowledge models. For example, if there is anything related to medicine, building, transport, astronomy, natural sciences, people, dates, organizations, semantic concepts, or artificial objects. Now, if you go to your tasks, uh, you can actually see some of these things extracted whenever it's creating this knowledge graph. So let's look at an example of this NOS2 that I previously uploaded. So here's a query that I ran and within the query, it was looking at the due date of the invoice that was paid on. But if you look at the overall schema, on any invoice, you have a address. So it figures out there is a geographical location, there are organization mentioned, there is a due date on it, and there are some semantic concepts, right? So whenever it's creating the knowledge graph, it will look at these specialized items or knowledge models and then try to figure out those relationship between the different uh, knowledge models that are present. Based on the length of your document, this indexing process can take a while, but I have previously created an index and knowledge graph for the CAG paper, so we're going to use that as an example. For the query part, you just need to come and click on knowledge based question answer. So let me ask a new query. The query is going to be what is CAG and why it's better than standard PRAG. So if I run this query, uh, this will take some time because it not only has to uh, do the extraction uh, of the information, but it also has to reason. Now, there are some interesting things that, that are happening. So here is the original query, but it decomposes that query into two parts. The first is what is CAG? And the second is why is CAG better than standard RAG? Then it takes the first query and basically extract the required information. Now it's using the SPO retriever. This is a specialized retriever that they have come up with. The same thing happens for the second part of the question, which is why CAG is better than standard RAG. And here's the response that it gets based on the retrieved chunks from the document. And at the end, it combines both of these uh, together to generate the final answer for us. So it says CAG or Knowledge Augmented Generation is an advanced framework that integrates external knowledge, particularly from knowledge graphs to enhance its generation capabilities. And it's better than standard RAG because it has explicit semantic knowledge, entity normalization, inferential knowledge retrieval, integration of semantic types and relationships, addressing RAG limitation and enhancing performance. So compared to a standard RAG system, it's using this reasoning process along with the retrieval process to give us better answers. So here was another example when I was doing retrieval on that invoice data. My query was what is the total amount on the invoice that needs to be paid? And it generated these different queries. So it basically decomposed that query into multiple queries. What is the invoice that needs to be paid? What is the total amount on this invoice? And return the total amount. And for each one of them, it basically got the answers and then combined them together to give us the final answer. As I mentioned before, you can do all of this through Python code. So if there is interest, let me know. I'll make a follow-up video. So this was a quick video on a knowledge augmented generation, which is a very interesting take on combining knowledge graphs with semantic retrieval and i'll highly recommend to check it out the project itself is open uh, source under apache 2.0 uh, the authors are also releasing a new version probably in a week or so that is going to have custom schema and visual queries and you will be able to use different models at different stages which could potentially improve performance so we'll highly recommend to check out the updated GitHub repo in a week or so. Anyways, if you're interested in retrieval augmented generation or different variants of it or agents, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.